like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you No, yeah, so basically I feel like the Mexican people were underrepresented there last night. I feel it. I can see that. I can see that too, man. But And a lot of people are telling me that I sound like bitter or something. Like, I'm not a rapper, fool. I'm not tripping about not being on stage. I'm saying like, oh, Jeezy performed, I think, last night. Yeah. Did he? That mm -hmm. would have been nice if he would have been on oh, stage. Oh, if he would have. Now, maybe, maybe the young legend had something to do, so right. he dipped. Right, because all the artists that did perform were up there. Facts. I respect it. Who was up there? I don't. I can't keep count. There was a lot of people that went, but I think Ojeezy was the only person that didn't pop out. Or were you gonna say he's the only Mexican that performed? Both. Did he perform? Was he supposed to perform? He did perform, yeah. He did oh, perform. he did? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see him perform because I caught it late. I saw the clip. I saw I didn't even see that clip. a picture of someone posting that he performed. Do you think it had something to do with it being Juneteenth? I don't understand. I thought Juneteenth was like on the 16th or something like that. It's on June 19th. It was Juneteenth yesterday. Yeah, it was Juneteenth. Facts. I respect it. Do you think that had something to do with it? Had something to do with what? The fact that they threw the show that day? <laughs> Or that there was no Mexicans on stage. There you go. Do you think it was supposed to be like... First of all, let me start off by saying congratulations to Kendrick Lamar and all of the wonderful individuals that performed last night. Uh, yeah, shut them up. So, I'm not trying to go racial with it, but I will say... Oh, we're just picking each other, like, picking each other's brains apart. Although, it was Juneteenth. And I believe that in remembrance of the massacre... I don't want to be wrong, but is it in Tulsa or in Selma? I don't even know. Or a place over there? I could be wrong, and I hate to be wrong, but I know it's in remembrance of a massacre that took place, right? Um, I like to say that the Mexican people have been persecuted in this wonderful land for a long, long, long time. Mm. Now, I have a question. Why is it that whenever black people are minding their own business. Whenever it is that black people are doing their own thing, they're not bothering nobody and, and, and referencing nobody. Somehow people make themselves the topic. People somehow want to make it seem as though that black people are deliberately trying to um, disrespect them and, you know, trying to say something without saying something. And you were hearing directly on this podcast how these Mexican guys were sitting up there trying to say that, oh, you know, how come there weren't no, you know, no Mexicans up there? Because there weren't. I, I'm, I'm not sure why there had to be. I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. I'm not even sure how you feeling as though that your feelings are hurt. That you're directly, you feel left out. Um, and then you want to bring up the, the part of like, oh, well, you know, Mexicans have been treated, you know, wrong in this country for a very, 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 very long time. OK, so y'all can deal with that situation and that problem with the United States government. Correct. Correct. Um, you can also deal with that conversation when it deals with the police. Right. Correct. Correct. Um, but I'm also going to bring up this one thing as well. Dr. Hector Garcia was a physician, military veteran and advocate for the rights of Mexican Americans. Quote, we are not and have never been a civil rights organization personally. I hate the word. Hector Garcia, founder of the American GI Forum. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. By the early 1950s, the American GI Forum, while still denying that it was a civil rights organization, sought to end discrimination in Texas schools, in employment, and in the use of public spaces. The core strategy depended on educating Anglos that Americans of Spanish-speaking descent or Latin Americans were Caucasian, and that to identify them as anything but white, whether on birth certificates or traffic citations, was illegal, making any distinction between Latin Americans and whites, he wrote, was a slur, an insult to all Latin Americans of Spanish descent. They not like us. They 
not like us. They not like us. John James Herrera was an American attorney, activist, and leader in the Chicano movement. Quote, Latin Americans of Mexican descent belong to the Caucasian race and are therefore white. John J. Herrera, LULAC President, 1952. John James Herrera joined the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, in 1933 and began practicing law in Houston, Texas in 1943. During World War II, he was involved in the movement to end employment discrimination against Mexican Americans in Houston shipyards. In 1948, he joined the legal team that brought the school discrimination case of Minerva Delegado against the Bastrop Independent School District to the Texas Supreme Court. The ruling declared educational segregation of Mexican American students illegal in Texas. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Felix Tijerina, 1905 to 1965, was a Mexican American restaurateur, activist, and a philanthropist in Houston, Texas. He served as the 25th president of the League of United Latin American Citizens. Quote, let the Negro fight his own battles. His problems are not mine. I don't want to ally with them. Felix Tijerina stated that his mission was to help Mexican-Americans merge into the American mainstream as successfully as he had, and that early Mexican restaurants like Felix's were among the first institutions where urban Anglos and Hispanics rub elbows. Tijerina's Americanized version of Mexican cooking was what brought the races together, and it was a triumph of diplomacy. Walsh also added that Tijarina's style of cooking was not about bringing authentic Mexican flavors to Texas. It was about putting Anglos at ease with things Mexican. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Gustavo Gus C. Garcia, July 27, 1915, June 3, 1964, was an American civil rights attorney. Garcia worked with fellow attorney Carlos Cadena in the landmark case Hernandez v. Texas, 1954, arguing before the United States Supreme Court for the end of a practice of systematic exclusion of Hispanics from jury service in Jackson County, Texas. Gustavo stated this, I know Negroes aren't getting their full share of democracy, but frankly, I'm prejudiced against Negroes, and I do not believe that they are entitled to everything that we get. Garcia served as legal advisor to the League of United Latin American Citizens from 1939 to the 1940s. He was elected to the San Antonio Independent School District Board of Education in April of 1948, but later resigned. He helped revise the LULAC Constitution to permit non-Mexican Americans to become members in 1949. In that year, he also served as a lawyer to the family of Felix Longoria and helped contract negotiations for the rights of workers in the United States Mexico Barcerio program. On May 8, 1950, Garcia and George I. Sanchez appeared before the State Board of Education to seek desegregation enforcement. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. A lot of Hispanic and Latino parents will literally try to teach you at a young age to not be friends with black people and disgusting. They show you racism, anti-blackness, like colorism at a f age. You could be a dark-skinned Latino and yet you will get a lot of hate. Not only that, media, media will even show that too. Where literally they show that white Latinos are literally rich, smart, educated, and they're always holy. But when it comes to black people or Afro Latinos, they're ghetto, they're poor, uneducated, and they're criminals. And not only that, not only that, a lot of these celebrities believe this too. And also, they do blackface. And that's why a lot of people don't want to unite when it comes to the Hispanic and Latino community because of the amount of fucking anti-blackness, the racism towards black people. And not only that, y'all forget that literally black people have influenced our community so much from technology, from food, 
to even music. And some of y'all be dancing to those music that literally were influenced by black people. What does civil rights mean to you? So given the work that you've done on the marker, the fact that you're a part of La Tipica, and all the, all the things that you've been a part of, what does civil rights mean to you? To be honest with you, when all this civil rights movement came in with Lyndon Johnson and such, I considered it more as being a benefit to the blacks than to us because we were already accepted. So when you did go downtown and um, there was black and white people intermingling, um, were the Mexican Americans segregated to where the white people were or the black people? To where the white people were. So you would mm. drink and go through the doors that the white people went through and white yeah. water fountains? And, and yeah. let's face it, there will always be a problem. There will always be people who look down on you because of your ethnicity. But all you need to do is just look up at them and show them I'm as good or better than you, you know. But I felt that it was helping them more. And I was very glad to see it. To know, you said earlier about the white and black water fountain. Mm -hmm. in the, I guess, the main areas right near Lee College. Were you allowed to drink from the white fountain? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I was uh, allowed to drink from the white fountain. Because when I was growing up and we rode the bus to Houston, there was one long row on the bus in the back. And that back row was designated for blacks. And that's where they had to sit. Uh, I could sit anywhere that I wanted to on the bus, but the blacks had to sit back there. And if that row was full, they had to stand all the way to Houston. They could not sit with the others. I think many Mexican Americans were afraid. What would happen if we weren't considered white? How do we know we're not gonna be forced or pushed to identify with the black race at a time when black people are fundamentally denied so many basic rights. I remember downtown and I didn't understand it because I was raised thinking everybody was equal and I remember downtown with my mom one time and uh, Stripling's department store was downtown, Leonard's, Monig's, um, and going into the stores and you'd have a colored, um, a colored water fountain and a white water fountain mm -hmm. and colored restrooms, white restrooms. And I used to tell mom, what color do you have to be to use the colored? You know, I mean, cause it was like just foreign to me. And she said, oh, that's, that's for the blacks. There's money and calling yourself the black supremacist or whatever you want to call yourself, but really, you're just a ghetto. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You're just a ghetto. Explain that to me. That just spills nothing but vile, venom, garbage out of your mouth. You talk a good one, but you live in the whitest neighborhood in California. If you're all about that, brother, go live in the hood, brother. But you won't live amongst your black people that you say you love and you're there to protect and you want better from. It's funny how that works, right? A lot of the ghetto yes. do that. They talk a good one. They say, oh, this is for my people. Oh, I hate the white people. Oh, don't live like that. But yet, you're living the white man's world. You can get up and go anytime you want. You can go live in a black neighborhood, but you won't because you're the ghetto and, 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 you know, truth be told, I'm not a very big fan of the black people. You talk a good one just for the views. We've been fighting since the 1800s, brother. Like I said, you guys were enslaved. You guys didn't break those chains until 1865, and even then you're still slaves. Even now, the the N-word, that's what I call the N-word, GA, right? I say that all the time. I actually made a video. He said it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I said I'm the element of racism, of the belief among some Mexican-Americans that 
blackness is inferior. Over, yeah, wait your Over turn. Over equality. Wait your turn. Mm -hmm. and, and to, the, to those young Renaissance or Renaissance who want to believe that, you better you better turn your TV, brother. <laughs> you better turn your radio. Back. What do you think about these black they, they, lives matter that, that, that they want to be paid for for being, uh, what is it, slaves and all that? Reparation. Oh, yeah, there. Are, yeah. are you talking about Well, I heard they passed in North Carolina. Yes. Uh, but it was, what? It was a small little town in uh -huh. North Carolina that passed reparations for whoever's over there. Um, I'm sure they'll try to do something out here in California. I think they already actually got a little board going that they're going to start looking into it. So uh, Yeah, and that's what we, the Rafa, need to step yeah. up, protest, and I'm talking major, and turn around and tell them no. Nobody gave reparations until the Native Americans and the Mexican get ours first. Yes, We've been going through this crap a lot longer, so I don't oh, want yeah. to hear it. Hey, hey, because I, it's, it's not fair, dog. How are no. you going to give a bunch of money to to a specific group, dog? This is the United know. States, a melting pot. How are you going to give it to a specific group? Specific group because right now they've got the white people with so much guilt. It was your, it was, it was your yeah, parents. Yeah. So there's an element of racism and there's an element of fear of Jim Crow segregation. Did you know that during the Great Depression in the 1930s, the U.S. deported up to 1.8 million people to Mexico, with an estimated 60% of them U.S. citizens? The Secretary of Labor claimed that this mass deportation was essential for reducing unemployment, and discrimination was also a factor as people were targeted because of their physical distinctiveness. Police would surround parks and round people up in trucks or force them on trains to bring them to Mexico. One raid at a Los Angeles park rounded up more than 400 people. California hospitals even deported patients with severe illnesses who were believed to be of Mexican descent. One woman with leprosy was driven just over the border and left. And these company fired Mexican American workers or people they believed of Mexican descent. Some historians and legal scholars claim these deportations meet standards for ethnic cleansing since it was racially motivated and ignored citizenship. A recent study by economists claimed that these mass deportations might have increased unemployment and exacerbated the Great Depression. Pause to read an excerpt from this study. This event is known as Mexican repatriation, but since repatriation means a return to one's own country, and many of these people were U.S. citizens who have never been to Mexico, this was not a repatriation at all. This history is not commonly taught in U.S. schools. One study shows only four U.S. textbooks mention it and only one devoted half a page. The U.S. government has never apologized for this or offered any reparations to the victims. This history deserves its rightful place in U.S. classrooms. Did you know this history? They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. So there you have it. All the information that I've put throughout um, a few years um, directly in one video uh, took me a little bit to put this together. I had to go back and try to find you know, quite a bit of these clips. Um, so, yeah, pretty much that's my response. As I stated before, you know, you have people out here that want to talk a whole bunch of smack, but not even know or understand their own history while they're talking out the side of their necks. Again, you've had fields of Mexican-Americans state that it is a negative if you decide to state that they are anything but white. Again, I gave you examples. I gave you history of which a lot of them don't even either know about or don't even want to bring up and or talk about it. Shout out to the young uh, Mexican brother that wanted to bring some truth about his people to the forefront, which a lot of them don't also want to acknowledge. On top of that, I gave you more history of Mexican elders that are older than me that were a part of and remember segregation. And they specifically stated that they did not drink from the color water fountains. They specifically stated that they sat with the whites on the buses while the black people were meant to sit in the back, if not stand up, if there was not enough room for a white patron of that bus. So again, we can clearly see how one group was treated versus how another group is treated. So again, they not like us. They not like us. They not like us. And uh, I will catch you guys on my next TED talk and peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.